recording we're going to cover how to manage open notifications so this is this screen mostly is for the coordinator role um, we're instead of having this transaction up in the favorites we're having it down through the menu path it the key transaction we're looking at is qm10 change data change notification data we're having it down through the menu path which is quality management quality notification Workless notification QM10 change data. The reason I'm doing it through menu path because as coordinator you should also know QM01, which is creating a manual notification, QM02, which is just one notification at a time making a change or displaying one. You should be able to see the defects that have occurred. That's what these item work lists are. These are reports you sh we should be able to know. And then open any tasks that are, um, see what tasks are open. And so we do these others using like the QM12, we look at our QM12 uh, work list, BPP, and then also QM15 BPP, look at the existing defects that have occurred. But as a notification coordinator, you should be able to come up and down this menu path with no problem. But your key, transaction you'll be running on a daily basis QM10 to manage your open notifications. Double click on QM10. Once in the screen um, to set these fields correctly what values need to be in we have created variants or uh, with the preset values in them. So go up to the top here on the second icon uh, get variant depending on what plant you're in, BP01 or BP02 underscore notif notification. Um, in this case, I have BP01 as my example, so I'll double click on BP01. It uh, selects the in process and outstanding button, clears out the dates, and the key is if you are a coordinator, let me scroll down here, I did uh, a, a lookup on this field, notification type field, if you scroll down to the bottom, the notification types we're using are Z1 for customer complaints. So if you are in charge of those, you'll enter Z1 here. Z2 for vendor, you'll enter Z2 if you're in charge. You always enter Z2 when you come in. Z3 for internal, all internal related defects in process. Anything within the building, we enter Z3. And then audit notification, we would enter Z4. And then who's ever in charge of Kappa would enter Z9. In my example here is Z3 internal, we had an internal issue. Or, I, or I'm in charge of internal issues, Z3. And then once we do, we hit execute to look at our list. And once in the list, you'll see some of the key fields. It's shown again that we're in Z3, which is internal notifications. And you'll see the notification number, the tag number that's been assigned to each defect. The start date and required end date, and that's an overall. I mean, that's kind of like a, the, the recommended or suggested end date that the coordinator has put on it. And then we have the statuses I'll talk to in a little bit. And then priorities that the coordinator has established based on what they see the defect is the general description or overall description that was entered when they entered the defect. And then any material related, if there's a material or a customer or if I, when I scroll right, the vendor. And then when you look down through here, you'll see the, the statuses and you'll start to learn these. I'll show you how you learn them when we go in. But you have this, uh, this means in process, this PR notification in process. That means it started. And these, this means outstanding tasks, OSTS, outstanding. Notification and process, um, task complete. And then outstanding notification here, which means the coordinator has never even picked it up yet. And then again, a notification has been put in process that has outstanding tasks. So coordinator is coming in here and looking at what should they be doing? They can see on this top one, one, it's late. You can see the red over here. It was supposed to be, that's just the suggested date, but it's we haven't met that date, so we have the icon over here is red. But that's an outstanding task. That means someone, uh, we have tasks that were sent out from the coordinator and hasn't finished yet. 
these are tasks that have finished, so the coordinator should be going in these, highlighting these, going in notification, checking the task description out to find out if they have determined the cause or corrected the issue so the coordinator can close these. These should all be reviewed to see if they can be closed. These three here need to be reviewed because they're brand new. They were triggered by our initiation or trigger screen that triggers the notification uh, from the users that are have this access to this program. If they see a defect, they can trigger it. And you, the coordinator needs to go in and start this. I, in this example, I'll highlight it. I'll go into the notification by hitting the notification tab. The very first thing I'm going to do is hit the put in process tab so I can tell myself I've picked this up. And then I kind of see the general description or maybe some more description down here. And this is what started the whole thing. So I'm looking at this and based on what I'm seeing here, and usually there's more detail here, we are expecting them to fill in a lot of detail so we but just by scrolling down, we see this description, we know what has occurred. We're then able to go into items based on what we see here. We can then go into items and define what location this has occurred in based on the description. So it's going to take some time to train the initiators to make sure we have enough information where we can fill this out. And then the defect code so in this example, I'll say it was, from what I read, uh, we had burrs. And then I could give a little bit more detail here from what I read, detailed description. And I'm now able to send a task out based on what I read and from who needs to investigate or do some work on this. So I'm gonna choose a defect task or a task in this case, investigate problem. I'm going to give a general description, or I'm going to give a description of what I expect. Now we'll double click on this line, the task line. And all we did, we all the fields are to the right. If I were back on this line and scrolled right, all those fields are there. But I find it easier just once we get the code in and the description by double clicking on the task line. It brings the same information kind of more like a box. And then you would, uh, if you're going to send this task out to someone, you would select their user ID. If you don't know it, you would pull down here. I could start my first initial last name with an asterisk, hit enter. And I was the only one. If there was others that started with DT, D with the last name T, I would get a list to pick from. And then when do I expect the uh, task to be started. And in this case, I'm going to say Monday and completed by Tuesday of next week. I'm saying for the user or for the person I'm sending the task. So now, if I had multiple tasks, I could send out multiple lines here. And so I've got this notification going and starting on the investigation. If I hit save, You'll see it's now that line. This is the line. It was in process. And the one thing I did miss while I was in there, I'm going to go back in. And the additional data tab, When? what do I expect the end date to be? The required end date. And let's say on the 4th is when I would like to have the entire notification done. And if I can tell the priority from what I saw by the description, I would choose that at this point. I'll save. And now you can see that information has been filled out. Now the example of the notification that has been completed, um, I'm going to come down and look at those as well. They have tasks. I'll show you how I know this, these, these task codes. I'm going to go in that one that has this ATCO, which means completed. And when I am in, I see this, we have this status line here, but when you hit this little icon here, it explains what those codes mean. Notification in process and all tasks are complete. So that allows me now to go down and say, okay, I'm going to go down into each item, highlight the line, go into the task. This is the defect line. Go into the task. 
I'm going to click on the the extended text tab here to see what they wrote and they wrote this information here and we have them during the task put in their date and initials and then each time they're writing some information we're saying at that time so I'm looking here and then also I'm going up to the attachment icon up here this attachment icon and highlighting the quality notification hitting enter and there's no attachments there and then I'll go again attachment task and I'll show you how I knew that see this attachment list there were no attachments to this if it wasn't gray like this it was dark I, I there was attachments I'd hit it and then I could see the attachments that were linked now uh, based on what I saw in that task description this here from what the uh, owner or the task assignee entered I'm now able to go into the defect line again by hitting the overview did I have the right defect? Yes. Let me then go into the cause from what I saw because I was able to get the cause out of that. I'm going to pull down on the cause code list. I'm just going to say it was design inputs and then more detail. We have always putting the code in but we're always adding a little more detail as well to go along with the code. And then if this was a completed notification, we would then be able to hit this checkbox here, which I'll do. And it says you want to complete it now. Was this an internal external issue? And I'll say internal, the green check. And that one now here is right here. Notification is now complete. And that is how to manage notifications. You will need to get in open notification. You'll need to kind of get into the different types of notifications and get used to going in and drilling in to the different tabs. The reference object, you know, if I see order number sitting here, material number sitting here additional information what was the priority of start date and end date who's the coordinator the items tab uh, the defect line the defect location the cause is was there a cause entered and then the task related to the defect now activities are what did we do to correct the problem so it never happens again if you did do a correction, go ahead and record that as well. By pulling down on the uh, available options, you can see I revised the literature or conducted training. Now, this tends to be, and then you can have more detail. You're going to have to enter an additional description on with each of the codes, detail about the training. Just so there, so there's more, I, it's not just a code. I want to describe what happened. Uh, the actual activity tab tends to be done a lot more with Kappa, the Kappa notification Z9. It uh, does not need to be done with the Z1, 2, or 3, the customer, vendor, or, or internal. But if you happen to do a corrective action, you can record it. So now um, I'm going to back out. I'll save that entry I made. And so you're just always trying to manage this list down, getting your open notifications complete, and looking at your aging dates here on when these should start and when the required end, so you can manage your open notifications. And that is complete of the notification, managing your open notifications.